I'm presenting a phase two study of gemcitabine, cisplatin, and ipilimumab in patients with metastatic urothelial cancer. For uh, years, immune therapies have been used for the treatment of urothelial cancer, predominantly for the treatment of non-muscle invasive disease, and there's been a sense that immune therapies might have a role in the treatment of more advanced disease, uh, but that had been underexplored. We initiated this study several years ago before the current wave uh, of interest in PD-1 and pd one blockade, um, but based on some interesting data suggesting that in patients with localized bladder cancer, CTLA-4 blockade with ipilimumab caused pharmacodynamic effects, resulted in infiltration of T cells within the tumor specimen. Uh, so we reasoned that if we gave chemotherapy first, we might be able to cause destruction of cam some cancer cells, release of tumor antigen, uh, which can then be exploited by the administration of CTLA-4 blockade. We used a phased treatment schedule in this study where patients received two cycles of chemotherapy alone with gemcitabine and cisplatin, and those were given in standard doses and schedules. And that was followed by four cycles of the combination of gemcitabine cisplatin plus ipilimumab. Ipilimumab was given at a dose of 10 milligrams per kilogram. That's a higher dose than the dose approved for the treatment of metastatic melanoma, but it was a dose uh, that in a, a prior window of opportunity study where ipilimumab was given prior to cystectomy showed more marked pharmacodynamic effects. So patients received four cycles of gem cis plus ipilimumab, and then after completion of that sequence of six cycles of treatment, if they had at least stable disease, they could go on to receive maintenance ipilimumab once every three months. So we enrolled 36 patients on this study, and the primary endpoint was the one-year overall survival rate. We chose that endpoint based on the phase treatment schedule employed, and also based on data at the time that we were designing the study suggesting that uh, immune checkpoint blockade, particularly CTLA-4 blockade, might have, a better, uh, might have a bigger impact on survival as compared to response or progression. Uh, so the primary endpoint was one-year overall survival rate, and we were seeking uh, a one-year overall survival rate of 80% as compared to historical controls with gemcitabine and cisplatin alone, demonstrating one-year overall survival rate of about 60%. The study design called for uh, the regimen uh, to um, uh, be fit for further evaluation if the lower bound of the 90% confidence interval uh, exceeded 60%. So we enrolled 36 patients, uh, and um, the one-year overall survival rate on the study was 59%, with the lower bound of the 90% confidence interval at 41%, uh, suggesting that the study didn't reach that primary endpoint. So th this was actually the first study initiated to explore immune checkpoint blockade in urothelial cancer. Uh, although not the first study reported, it was the first study initiated. Uh, and it's the first study reported combining chemotherapy with immune checkpoint blockade in, in urothelial cancer. And what we found was that although this did not improve outcomes compared to historical controls, uh, we did immune monitoring uh, of uh, peripheral blood, uh, both after chemotherapy alone and after the combination of chemotherapy and ipilimumab, and were able to demonstrate that after chemotherapy alone, we did not see any particularly detrimental effects on the circulating immunocytes. However, after the addition of ipilimumab, we did see an expansion of peripheral blood CD4 and CD8 cells, suggesting pharmacodynamic effects of immune checkpoint blockade, even when given concurrently with chemotherapy. Uh, and while um, the results of this study uh, don't suggest that this regimen in, a, in an overall population of patients improves outcomes, this does potentially bode well for future combinations combining chemotherapy with PD-1 and pd one blockade, which we know has single agent activity in urothelial cancer. So, so the, the potential combinations, the logical combinations in these studies are already being initiated would be to combine standard chemotherapy uh, with PD-1 and pd one blockade, uh, either in a phase schedule like we did in this study uh, or using a switch maintenance schedule where the chemotherapy is given first uh, and after chemotherapy, as long as patients aren't progressing, they go right on to receive uh, the uh, PD-1 or pd one blockade.